Hello, my name is uh, Ivan Chermok. I'm a, a solutions architect at Tegera. In this session, we are going to take a look, it's actually Ron, this is on um, AWS. Um, in this session, we are going to, uh, to look into running a Calico for Windows on uh, AWS infrastructure and uh, the agenda for for this session is to uh, do a quick look into Calico, what it is, what it does, then uh, go through a few networking considerations for Kubernetes and Calico on Windows, uh, install, how to install Calico with, um, uh, with KubeADM, uh, and we'll go through the process uh, during the demo of installing, config, Configuring and then testing uh, connectivity between between the pods uh, that will run on the uh, uh, Linux side and on uh, on the Windows side, and use a few example policies to tighten the security around that. The all the collateral for used in this meeting is uh, available on GitHub uh, under the Tegera Solutions uh, install Calico for Windows uh, repository. So uh, what, uh, what is Calico? Uh, Calico is uh, a networking solution and a network security solution for Kubernetes, for containers, uh, bare metal, and, uh, and VMs. It's known for, for its speed, its uh, great performance, and that thanks to the design that Calico have chosen, where you can set up a layer three network without any encapsulation overhead. But if you do need uh, overlay uh, to use overlay, you can use IP and IP and VXLAN. Calico offers uh, those options as well. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's using the use of BGP allows Calico to scale quite uh, fast uh, and uh, uh, be very robust in that sense, which allows the Kubernetes clusters to be scaled to uh, their limits. Uh, and it's also uh, recognized widely in the industry, especially in the Kubernetes domain for its implementation of network policies for, uh, for Kubernetes clusters. It's been adopted by all the major cloud providers uh, using Calico uh, network policies in uh, their managed Kubernetes offerings, uh, as well as in uh, many, uh, uh, many popular uh, distributions of uh, packaged versions of Kubernetes like Docker Enterprise, Rancher, uh, OpenShift. Uh, we've been working since early days with the uh, uh, with the customers uh, that have quite large clusters. Uh, so we've been working on the performance and scaling capabilities, and we have uh, some of the largest fin FinServe, FinTech, and SaaS companies in our portfolio. Um, if you are interested in participating in um, in uh, uh, contributing to the open source, uh, Calico comes in two versions, the open source and the enterprise version built on top of the open core. Uh, we have quite a large community. Uh, it's more than 5,000 people in the Slack channel that we have, Calico users. Um, and uh, here are some, some references to where you can, you can find us and contact us or follow, uh, follow us. Uh, as of today, we, uh, we know of uh, over a million nodes that run Calico on uh, daily basis, and that's only the uh, the nodes that we we were told the community shared with us. Uh, we know that that number probably uh, is uh, larger than that. Uh, here's a quick slide of the span of uh, Calico. Uh, you can see on the left hand side the uh, managed solutions represented, then uh, as, uh, the upstream Kubernetes and some of the packaged uh, solutions. Uh, Docker Enterprise, Ben Mirantis, OpenShift, Rancher, uh, Canonical, VMware, Tanzo, and moving all the, all the way to the uh, right uh, to VMs and bare metals. Uh, besides Kubernetes cluster, Calico can be installed on non-Kubernetes uh, nodes. And you can, even there, you can, um, you can connect them to, to your uh, control plane running in Kubernetes and uh, program the uh, the firewall or the, pu the push policies on, onto those VMs as well. Uh, and uh, Calico's data plane uh, was built as a pluggable data plane. So 
as of today, we support uh, Linux standard uh, Linux implementation of uh, IP tables, IP sets. Uh, we support the uh, new version, uh, the faster version that, that came out, um, uh, not so <clears throat> came out uh, recently, the uh, Linux eBPF data plane, and we also support Windows hosts as of today. Um, Calico is the only solution that can provide uh, both networking and network policies across uh, Linux and Windows platforms. So uh, jumping into some networking options when you're configuring your um, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the, uh, you have to select uh, the pod cider, uh, <laughs> service cider, pod cider, uh, when you're building a cluster and you uh, typically have to consider whether you want that to be routable or non-routable. That would affect how you configure Calico uh, networking. If you're using Calico CNI, then you have options in there uh, choosing between uh, BGP uh, without any encapsulation or one of the overlays like IP and IP and VXLAN. When we are talking about Windows, IP and IP not available on Windows. You can use only BGP and uh, or uh, VXLAN. And uh, there is another th uh, thing worth mentioning that's Kube Proxy has some limitations on Windows. Uh, there, there are other limitations as well, um, but th these ones are something that, uh, that that you should be aware of. And for Kube Proxy side, uh, as of uh, today, Kube Proxy supports only a single IP block per host. Uh, whether uh, Whereas on Linux, you can configure uh, different IP pools and they can be used by, by the hosts. By default, Calico uses this slash 26 IP pool, uh, but it, uh, when it comes to Windows, there is only one IP block that can be assigned in there. So you have to size your IP pool. Uh, if you're using multiple IP pools, you, you need to make sure that you size that properly. Uh, in terms of uh, Calico networking considerations, as I mentioned, IP and IP, you cannot really use that. Uh, and Calico by default, because uh, because uh, a lot of our customers want to uh, <clears throat> kick the tires uh, fast and get going with Calico. So IP and IP was chosen to be as default configuration because when you install that in, uh, in the cloud, which is predominantly probably most used environments, uh, you really don't have access to uh, underlying infrastructure, networking infrastructure. So BGP is not very, uh, easy option in there. So I, IP and IP was chosen to be uh, the default. So whenever you install in Calico for Windows, you will have to make sure that you switch your networking backends to either BGP, uh, which is most popular in the on-prem environments or VXLAN. And uh, I'll, I'll go through that in the demo and show how you can do that. Um, uh, yeah, the, uh, what I mentioned about the, uh, the CIDR blocks uh, or the uh, IP blocks uh, that slash 26 is by default on Windows also, um, uh, Windows reserves four IPs from that block for internal use. So uh, when you're sizing your uh, IP pool uh, that is going to be used for, for Windows, make sure you account for that. So the, if you size something super small just to test something out, uh, you may easily run out of IPs just because four of those will, will be reserved by, by the Windows platform. And uh, in terms of the NAT, um, uh, NAT outbound, uh, you can configure IP pools in Calico uh, to apply NAT whenever traffic is leaving the node. Um, and on Windows, the traffic between the node, uh, between the pods is not NATed, but when it comes out, um, com comes uh, uh, goes outbound connection from the node, then you have an ability to apply NAT or uh, not apply NAT. And there are some configuration settings that you can uh, adjust to do that. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, operating system version, uh, the minimum version that you can use, it's uh, 1809. Uh, if you want to use, um, and if you want to use network policies, uh, you want to apply network policies on Windows, then the build number should be at least 17763 uh, or any about that. And that's because um, Windows added the uh, 
specific capability uh, WinDR that uh, WinDSR that uh, that is needed for the policies to work on Windows. Um, without that, uh, the policies, the networking part will work, but the policies will not. So uh, here are a few examples for 1809, 1903. In today's session, I'm going to use 1909, uh, or you can you can try the uh, 2004, the uh, the latest version. And uh, th there are a few features uh, that need to be installed on the uh, Windows servers. That's remote access uh, with uh, sub features routing and uh, direct access VPN. Those are necessary for, for the policies and for the networking to be set up correctly. And uh, if you setting up the uh, development cluster or te test cluster where you will need access to kubelet, just make sure that you open the port kubelet port uh, in the Windows firewall if you have that in, uh, the firewalls enabled. Um, the uh, 10 to 50, that's, that's the default one. And uh, if you were to about well, some some limitations uh, for <clears throat> uh, for the Windows platform, so uh, right now the setup is uh, a little bit more involved than on Linux side, where you just apply the YAML files and Calico operator does the rest of the uh, things, uh, kind of provisions and installs everything, all the components manages the lifecycle. On the Windows side, you do not have the ability to use the operator based install because uh, currently uh, Windows platform is lacking some capabilities for Kubernetes like privileged containers. That's uh, that's what we use on the Linux side uh, to kind of automate this setup. Uh, another, what I already mentioned a couple of times, BGP or VXLAN, th those are the only supported mo modes for networking backend. And whenever uh, you do some changes to the VXLAN, like VXLAN configuration, you'll have to drain the network. That's also some limitation on the uh, Windows platform. The uh, networking uh, uh, changes are very intrusive to uh, to Windows platform. So whenever you do some changes, like adjusting MTU uh, or uh, some other uh, settings for, for VXLAN configuration, you'll have to basically drain the network and restart it. Um, in, uh, there, there is a link I'm providing the link because uh, there, there are other things uh, in terms of limitations and known issues for Windows platform. Uh, we have those listed on, on the website. So then there is a link in the presentation and this presentation will, uh, will be sent out after the meeting. Uh, we have for Calico Enterprise, if you want to test it, you want to play with it, we have um, trial uh, version where uh, that can be set up for, for you in the cluster, or uh, it can be deployed into your existing cluster uh, using uh, using uh, mul uh, multi-cluster setup of Calico, where the control plane will be hosted uh, by us in uh, <clears throat> in our environment, and your cluster is going to be joined to it, and you will be given access to to that control plane um, to to the UI to to manage your cluster. Um, so uh, if you're interested in that, go to tegerio slash trial and uh, sign up for one of those options. Uh, there are a few upcoming events uh, for, uh, the, we, we do in this sessions on a uh, weekly basis, uh, a few sessions per, per week. Uh, so there are a few that are coming up, uh, how to use uh, Calico in a multi-tenancy, in Kubernetes multi-tenancy. Uh, one session on the multi-cluster management and how you can leverage federated identity and services. Uh, that's one of the Calico Enterprise features where, where you can federate the workload ad identity um, and uh, services across multiple clusters. Uh, deep dive into Kube Proxy, what it does and how you can use Calico in, in different environments like OpenShift, uh, Rancher, or set it up on, on, in the on-prem. Uh, we have published a uh, an ebook recently. That's a free ebook uh, intro to Kubernetes networking. Uh, we got pretty good reviews uh, from from the community on that. So if you're interested, uh, go and uh, get get the book using the the link in this presentation. Uh, also, we launched recently Calico certification, um, and uh, <clears throat> it's about to be GA'd. Uh, I think uh, in uh, uh, next week or maybe in early January, it's going to uh, to go 
uh, go fully public. So uh, you can go and pre-register if you are interested in that. Uh, okay, let me jump into demo. Uh, if you uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q and A or to use the uh, um, to use the chat to pose those, and I'll check uh, the those from time to time. Okay, um, so for today's demo, um, one thing that I wanted to show. So here, uh, here's the um, a repo that has all the content for building out your Kubernetes cluster. And uh, there are two approaches in here, one using AWS infrastructure, the other using Azure. Right now, uh, AWS was, um, uh, was migrated to use uh, Terraform uh, and uh, Azure uh, is just using bash scripts to kind of build out the environment. Um, in this session, I'm going to use the AWS. So um, let me, and I already ran the Terraform just to, not to wait uh, too long in here. So here's an example output for that. You'll get your IPs for private and public IPs for all the uh, workers, the Windows password, um, what one Windows uh, worker is provisioned. And so <clears throat> let's try to access one of the nodes um, that's, uh, that is going to be my master node. Uh, so it's 190 IP, 190, okay, cool. And uh, Terraform has uh, some uh, some scripts um, and has uh, some user data that that it sets up to uh, to install all necessary components for for this, so that you can just uh, run the kubeadm. And to, uh, I'm using kubeadm to set up the cluster. Um, so there is a folder that gets uh, created on each of the nodes, master and workers. Uh, and that's setup folder, which has a few uh, files that uh, that we can use to provision uh, to create the Kubernetes cluster. So the first, I'm going to use the um, kubeadm init to create the cluster. Let's take a look into that file. And as you can see, there are, there are, <laughs> there are some settings for the cluster. I'm going to use the latest version of Kubernetes 1, uh, 120. So let me actually go and follow the instructions here. I already provisioned uh, the infra, so I'm going to just go and uh, create the uh, Kubernetes cluster, which will take uh, probably like about a minute or so to, to provision this. Um, for the meantime, I'm going to uh, go and jump to my work notes, which I prepared here. And on the worker notes, you will see there is a similar thing. There is a setup folder uh, with a few files that are related to, uh, to the workers. So let's take a look. OK, we got our uh, control plane initialized. And um, we need to execute a few <clears throat> things in here. Uh, let's check. My node is visible. OK, um, I have the control plane node I have a control plane node here, uh, and you can see right now it's uh, in the status not ready because I don't have any CNI configured yet. Um, so for the next steps, what I'm going to do, I'm going to join the workers first and then uh, install Calico on, on that. So to join the workers, I need to grab a few uh, things in here, a few variables from and uh, set them up on the workers. So I'm grabbing a token certificate, which I will set here, and the uh, um, discovery token itself. And then I can run the commands to replace the, uh, the tokens or the variables in, uh, in one of the files uh, that I'm going to, the join file that I'm going to use to uh, join Kubernetes node. So here is a quick look how it looks right now. <clears throat> so you can see there is a join token and 
uh, token insert hash that need to be replaced with a proper values. Uh, what happened in here? Okay. So I can now let me run my uh, command to replace it. Just validate. and run the command to join my workers to, to the cluster. Okay, these three workers are working. So there's something going on with this one. I'm not quite sure what. Let me try this. Something happens to this worker, so let me try and the quick repair if I can. If not, I'm just going to skip this one. Okay, looks like that worked. Okay. So in <clears throat> on my master node, uh, I can check if I still have um, my nodes. Uh, there should be yes. Uh, so I have one, two, three workers right now, and one master. The fourth worker doesn't seem to be joining. Um, and that's fine, I'm going to, to skip then the fourth one. Not sure what is happening right now in there. Uh, could be could be still provisioning or getting to, to the plane. Um, so uh, for uh, now, next step is to install Calico Enterprise in here. And I've uh, copied some of the uh, files to masternode uh, in the setup folder as a part of the provision in the infrastructure. So <clears throat> I have the uh, EBS storage class set up in here. Uh, the pool secret uh, that's, you will have to specify that it, it, as you run your Terraform provisioning script and the uh, um, Tegera uh, or Calico Enterprise license file, because I'm using right now the enterprise setup. So you uh, you have to supply this uh, license file and pull secret uh, as uh, in uh, Terraform variables uh, to get them copied. So let me run the uh, storage class. And take a look. Yes, here's our storage class uh, created. And then run uh, the uh, um, uh, apply the uh, Tegera operator and Tegera Prometheus operator um, YAML files that will install all the Calico components and uh, necessary operators, and those will install the components. So let's run the operator first and then the Prometheus. So they install in the necessary CRDs, uh, custom resource definitions into your cluster. And uh, we need also to configure the pull secret. And <clears throat> also all the steps you can find in the official documentation. So uh, here is, uh, I posted them just for convenience. Uh, and uh, now we need to apply the custom resources YAML. That's uh, after this, the installation of all the Calico components will uh, will uh, will get get started, and all the components will be provisioned. But before we can do that, as I said, the uh, Calico by default um, uses IP and IP. I need to download this resource, uh, this file, and modify it. So right now, here's my installation resource, the first one, um, and I don't have any definition, anything that, that would say here, which networking backend to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a here, just a set command, but if you are not using the GNU set, and this is GNU set, then uh, just manually uh, create block Calico networking uh, in that file. 
under the installation resource. So since I changed it, let's take a look. Now I got my Calico network block where I'm specifying the IP pool uh, for basically that spans the entire pod cider uh, configured for the cluster. So this has to match what you've used to provision your cluster. And this is the default value in my init uh, cube ADM init file. Um, I'm specifying the VXLAN to be used uh, and also NAT outgoing is, uh, is set in here. So now I can go ahead and apply. And once this applied, I can start looking for Tegera status. So <clears throat> uh, the Tegera status resource is available whenever you install in uh, Calico Enterprise and it shows you the status of uh, enterprise components in your cluster. The, uh, uh, right now I'm watching for API server because this is the component uh, that needs to become available uh, for me to apply the uh, license. And once I apply the license, all other components uh, will, uh, could, be, could be created. Uh, <clears throat> until the license is applied, all these components is going to be sitting either in a degraded state or progressing, but won't, won't move forward. Usually uh, it takes about a, a minute or two for uh, API server to initialize and uh, to maybe uh, get the quicker view of this. I can just watch the namespace where API uh, server lives, which is your system. Uh, so it's still getting, uh, getting instantiated. Okay, so now it's moving on. While it's doing that, let me take a look and see if I can spot anything in here when I was joining the, the node to the cluster. like it's fine. So let's apply our license. Okay. So the uh, next thing, uh, let's check our configuration of the IP pool just to, to show you how it would look and what you should see. Uh, if you're losing, uh, using the XLAN mode, you would see the XLAN mode always. By default, it would be IP, and, uh, IP always. Uh, specified, but because we specified VXLAN uh, to be our uh, networking backend, uh, we have this now. Um, you can, uh, or you can set that to, to none, <clears throat> either of those to none, and then BGP will be used. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do, uh, uh, Windows on Windows platform, certain capabilities that Calico has, they are just not supported uh, because the Windows networking doesn't have those capabilities. Uh, one of those is the IP borrowing feature, uh, meaning that when um, uh, you run out of uh, IP addresses, but some of the pools still have them on Linux side, uh, there is uh, such a uh, capability of called IP borrowing where the uh, node can can request the IP and borrow it from, from another node, uh, from, from the IP pool that is assigned to another node. On Windows, that is not supported, so we need to turn off that feature by setting this script affinity uh, setting true. And to do that, we need to use uh, a utility called CDL. Um, and that utility, uh, there are steps I linked here. Uh, the, uh, there is a reference to, to the documentation that walks you how to get it. Uh, but for, for the, the setup, uh, I created a, a simple script uh, to just uh, get, it, uh, get it through a single command. And once it's ready, 
Okay, once it's ready, let's take a look. Okay, that's our Calico CDL. And now let's take a look at what we have in the configuration currently. So the strict affinity is set to false, that's the default. Let's switch it to true. And check it one more time, okay, it's all done. And another thing, when you're using uh, VXLAN as your networking backend, then you need to disable BGP. And you can do that through, through just patching the configuration installation resource. Okay, so now uh, we got our cluster set up. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, so we got three workers that successfully joined the cluster. We got one um, one uh, master or uh, one node that is a part of control plane. And now we can move on to the setting up the windows. For, for the windows setup, uh, we need to um, upload the zip file uh, to Windows site. And this zip file is the Tiger Calico Windows zip. Uh, when you're using enterprise product, you get it from uh, Tiger representative. When you use an open source pr uh, product, you can download that from uh, from the uh, uh, GitHub or one of the links that uh, that's posted in the documentation. So to do this, let's um, grab set up a few variables. Windows <clears throat> public IP address, which is right here. And now we can copy copy our file to Windows site. Uh, also, when you provision your uh, with Terraform your uh, AWS infrastructure, you get the private key created uh, in your folder. Um, this one, which you can use to SSH into your nodes and connect to uh, to the or uh, load to Windows. Windows node is set up uh, in this uh, in this example set up with SSH server, so I can use SCP for instance to to copy everything that I need. And uh, oh, well, looks like I got too many. Is loaded. Let me remove a few. Some reason Windows, um, the SSH on Windows does not really um, does not really allow me to uh, to upload without a password. So you have to provide the password whenever it prompts you uh, for it. That doesn't seem to be the case on uh, uh, Linux side. That's an easy solution. Um, so uh, while that is being set up, let me jump over to Windows side and show you what I've got so far on the Windows. Uh, so on the, on the Windows, uh, I'm using the uh, um, uh, core image uh, of Windows, so I, get, uh, I don't uh, get much of the UI in here. Uh, let me launch a few PowerShell sessions that I will use to, to run a few commands. So on the Windows side, <clears throat> uh, the Terraform provisions and creates a few 
files uh, like downloads the install Calico Windows. That's a quick start script that we have uh, available in our documentation. Um, uh, it creates the CK folder with, where all the Kubernetes uh, components will be installed. And also into the uh, home directory of an administrator, um, I upload the uh, uh, private key because I need to get the uh, um, kubeconfig file. And the easiest way for me, at least for, for this uh, setup, is to get it from master node, just use, use the uh, kubeconfig file generated on the master node. Uh, for a production setup, you would not do that. You would create a separate kubeconfig file, which doesn't have full blown uh, admin access to, to the cluster, just to um, uh, necessary permissions to connect your Windows nodes. Uh, but in my uh, setup for simplicity, uh, that's uh, that's what I'm going to use. So uh, <clears throat> one thing that I need to do in here is to configure the IP address for master before I run the command to copy my kubeconfig. And I'll use the internal master IP. And then run SCP on the Windows side to uh, to get the uh, uh, config uh, cube config, and it's going to be in CK folder under their config. Here's the one. Um, so one one thing to note in here, uh, whenever on Windows the networking uh, in general very sensitive. Whenever you um, change something uh, on the networking level, some settings, uh, you have to uh, kind of uh, either restart that network, uh, networking, and that's what I mentioned for VXLAN settings. Whenever you change something, you will need to drain the network and then uh, bring it back up. So uh, whenever you install Calico, since it does uh, configure the networking, the default metadata routes get flushed. And so you know, to get those back, I'm going to preserve them uh, before uh, I install Calico so that I can uh, reinstall them back. And uh, if I show you get net route in here, so those are routes like uh, 169, 254, 169 something. So those are routes used by AWS uh, metadata API. Uh, if you need those, uh, then uh, restore them after you install uh, Calico. Uh, before I run the script, I need to make sure that my DNS server uh, IP is correct. And here I uh, specified all the default values uh, according to my cluster setup uh, or the default cluster setup in this example. If you're using some other values like CIDR service is different than 10.9600 slash 12, uh, then your uh, respectively your DNS server IP will, will be different. Uh, so in my case, Let's double check this. That's my default IP. And now I can I can run my script to to install Calico. So let's say let's run. Uh, so I'm installing Kubernetes version 120 and specifying the service cider and the DNS server IP. Uh, so what, what this script does, it downloads all the Kubernetes components for the version you specify. Uh, it sets up, um, uh, does all the necessary configurations, downloads the nanoserver image that is used as a pause com container uh, in Kubernetes environment. Um, and <clears throat> it also creates Calico services and uh, starts them. And typically takes about like uh, up to a minute to to run through all of that. So uh, once that is done, then we can install uh, the uh, uh, a few more services. That's kubelet and kube proxy. Those are uh, components which are part of uh, Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes platform. Uh, 
a few things to note in here. Uh, the Calico creates uh, the script, uh, creates the folder called uh, Tigera uh, Calico uh, once everything is installed. Um, one uh, one thing that you will notice uh, whenever see, see whenever the network gets adjusted, uh, you kind of get a hiccup in in the connection. That, that's what I mean when uh, by saying that uh, the changes to uh, to Windows networking considered to be intrusive on the Windows side. So you you can you can get uh, that behavior. Uh, so you can see there is a Tegera Calico folder in here. And that's where components for uh, 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 Calico are hosted on the Windows side, and you can you can find the logs in here. So if you need to uh, something isn't working correctly, then uh, go ahead and check check the logs uh, for Felix and the uh, node. Okay, so uh, let's run the next part. That's installing the Kubelet and Kubeproxy services. And let's verify that's those are running. Okay. So once <clears throat> once the services are running, uh, we can check uh, our uh, that our node is um, joined has joined the cluster. We can do that um, by just listing the nodes in the cluster. So we see now four of those, and to be more specific, let's use the label. So this is the one 30 seconds ago joined. That's the uh, that's the Windows node. Um, and so let's uh, let's restore our routes. Uh, To, just to show you before I do that, that uh, the routes, uh, you can see the uh, all the uh, metadata routes are gone now, uh, but we can uh, run this and restore them. So now they should be back. So now my metadata, AWS metadata API can, can work as uh, correctly as it was before. And uh, uh, since we got everything installed now, uh, the next step is to just go ahead and test the connectivity. And I have for in this repository a few applications uh, that can be deployed and uh, a few examples how to test this. And uh, in order to do that, let me actually copy this, uh, clone this repo so that I can run it just from that machine, from my master node. So let's deploy um, my apps, which are, uh, there is an Netshoot pod, a, uh, an IS st stack, and an Nginx stack. So if I get, get pods, I'll see, okay, my containers are getting created right now. So Windows is running, and that's because I pre-pulled the image. It uh, takes uh, Windows images a little bit larger than um, than Linux images. So I um, pre-pulled this image uh, beforehand because it takes about five minutes or so. Uh, so right now I got all my containers running, and uh, let's take the uh, test the connectivity between those. Uh, so <clears throat> here is the a few tasks from Netshoot container. To uh, to test, uh, look up the uh, DNS of each service, nginx service and is service, and then curl that service. So in both cases, I got my um, uh, DNS lookup result, and I got my HTTP 200 response. So the uh, you can see that from Linux side, for instance, I can uh, I can from pod I can connect. Uh, to another pod over this uh, Kubernetes service and can connect another pod on the Windows side over the Kubernetes service. So uh, let's try from the uh, Windows side now 
to do the same thing just to make sure that it works in both uh, both cases. So uh, here's the command to resolve DNS from IS pod on the Windows side. Uh, it's resolved, that's fine. And now the command to test uh, TCP connection over port 80. Uh, and I got my TCP success and just a simple curl on the Windows side. So I, I get my response from Nginx. So everything's working fine. Uh, but now uh, let's try to configure uh, the uh, default deny. Uh, so basically I would deny all the connections and uh, only uh, allow those that my policy is defined. So to tighten up the uh, what, what we can do uh, in this cluster. And I'm going to use the Calico global default deny policy. And let me see if I can show what actually that policy does. So <laughs> here's my uh, Calico global uh, default deny where I'm in this case, I'm limiting it that global deny to just my default namespace. Uh, but it looks very similar to uh, what what would uh, standard Kubernetes uh, policy would be, except that it's not namespace specific. It uh, it can be applied across uh, all namespaces for for the entire cluster. So once I apply this policy, now if I test my connections again. Uh, for instance, in both of these cases, try to resolve the DNS from Netshoot. Uh, it's, uh, you can see that I cannot do an SLOOKUP anymore because uh, my default deny uh, just blocks all the connections. So what I need to do is to deploy a few policies to allow that. And uh, for that, uh, I'm using the allow DNS policy. And um, that's this one. You can see that uh, in this policy, I'm allowing access to kubedns component over port uh, 53, but I'm using the namespace selector. So I'm saying whichever namespace has DNS host true, uh, I'm going to allow that flow. And for that, uh, to do that, I need to label my uh, kube, uh, kube, kube system namespace. So now I edit my label, DNS host true, and can deploy my policy. So once this policy is deployed, now I can test again my NS lookup, and you can see now, now it's going through. And let's run for both Windows and Linux. <clears throat> so the uh, Linux result, now Windows side results as well. So everything is working as I want it. Um, so now let's uh, establish the connections um, to, to allow for instance, from IS pod uh, to access uh, Nginx service. So right now, if I test this connection, you can see it's, it, it is blocked because the only policy I have in my cluster is allowing the DNS lookups over port 53, but nothing else. So let's deploy a few policies that configure uh, egress and ingress. And uh, what's important in here, once you're doing something like uh, default deny, you will have to configure policies for both sides for ingress and egress. If you don't do that, then uh, only the side for which you have policies, which rules you have, like let's say for egress, that if you have any policy that uh, specifies egress rules, then any other egress uh, not specified in, by those rules will be blocked. But if there is no uh, policies that affects a specific uh, path a specific traffic like ingress policy, there is only egress policy, then uh, ingress is going to be allowed uh, as long as there is no no other policy, no rules that, that affect it. So for my side, because I applied default deny uh, in, in my example, I'm going to, uh, I need to deploy uh, both ingress and egress to, to allow that access. So now if I test my Uh, the access again from IS pods to Nginx, now it's resolved. Uh, but for Netshoot, if from Netshoot container, uh, uh, Netshoot pod, I'll try to access Nginx service, uh, that request should fail because I do not have the policy set up for that yet. 
So, um, <clears throat> Um, one thing that, um, uh, let me actually deploy, uh, show you how these policies look in, uh, uh, how, how these policies uh, would look uh, in uh, Calico Enterprise UI. So if I get my node port service deployed, then get my um, IP address for, for the cluster, uh, for the master node, I can pull up the, uh, uh, pull up my um, Calico Enterprise UI. And for that, I actually need to configure a few accounts, the service account uh, or the, um, yeah, a service account because that's uh, the fastest way for me to create, uh, to configure access. And once it's configured, I can just go go ahead and get token that I'm going to use to log in. If you're doing this for production clusters, you would use like something SSO, uh, different different type, type of authentication, uh, typically used in enterprise environments. So <clears throat> uh, in uh, Calico Enterprise UI, uh, you have a policy uh, policy board view. I'm not going to go through all of the uh, options in here or all of the views uh, because it will uh, take me some time. So I'm going to show what I have in the policies board policy board um, where you can see every policy deployed in, in here. And uh, if you think about the evaluation of policies, so the traffic moves through the tiers. Each of these columns is called the tier in Calico Enterprise and from top to bottom. So the policy allowed in S would be, in this case, would be evaluated first before it hits any other policy in here. Uh, so one example with this is that once the policy is evaluated and the decision is made about a specific flow, it doesn't advance to next policies. Or let's say the decision is allow, it just allows. Uh, if it's denied, it just drops traffic. Uh, and <clears throat> this may not be uh, very easy to configure then whenever some policies need to take precedence, but still have the ability to evaluate other traffic. Um, so uh, especially if the selector is, uh, is a little bit too broad. So what we can do, we can reconfigure this allow DNS uh, policy to be in a different tier and the tier proceeding to the default. And so for, for that purpose, let's take a look into the example where we can redesign this by removing our DNS policy and apply and create a security tier and applying that policy uh, uh, into the security team, uh, tier. So now if I jump back to the UI, I have a security tier and I have allow cube DNS policy in here. And let me see if I can add a few things in here. So um, in this policy, you can see that the uh, the selector it has is very broad. It applies to 28 uh, pods in the cluster. Um, and that's because the selector is uh, select all. And the rules, if I take a look at the rules, I'm allowing the access to my kubeDNS and port 53, and then I'm using the pass a rule. That's a, a special type, uh, which is uh, used in Calico Enterprise because you have an ability with the pass rule um, to pass it to the next, uh, next tier. So what this allows me to do is to configure uh, the allow access only for this specific flow, but anything else, if I didn't have pass, uh, pass rule in here, anything else would be denied. That, that's how Kubernetes policies of, uh, work by default. Um, with the pass rule, I'm passing all other traffic that didn't match this, uh, passing to the next tier to decide what to do with that. So that allows me to basically say, uh, target any, uh, only specific flow, but uh, in a, especially in the broad selector like all, and only uh, um, uh, target that flow and uh, the rest I can pass further. So um, let's configure now, uh, uh, allow NetShoot to access IAS because before, uh, if you remember right here, we tried accessing 
uh, nginx, and uh, this request fails because uh, there, there, there are no policies for us to do that. And let's do the same for is. Just double check that nothing is in there. So is requests as, as well times out. So let's configure the policies now to allow NetShoot to access to IS. So now it's working. We can easily access IS. And uh, here's an example. Um, so you, you can use either Calico CDL uh, utility to deploy Calico uh, policies, or you can use kubectl Cube in Calico Enterprise. If you're using Calico open source, you would use only Calico CDL uh, because those are um, custom using custom resource definitions, CRDs in Kubernetes. Uh, so you'll you'll have to use Calico CDL in the open source version. In the uh, but uh, my, my current version is enterprise. That's why I'm able to do that. So if uh, <clears throat> let's deploy another policy that allows uh, ingress to IS for any from any pod except NetShoot. So let's deploy this and try it out. So from NetShoot, we'll try to access my IIS. And now the request is failing. Uh, it's going to time out. But if I do that from Nginx now, uh, I can do that from Nginx pod easily. OK, um, this was the last bit. And that concludes this session. Uh, I want to uh, all, uh, reiterate that all the materials, uh, all the collateral is available, all the examples here at Tagera Solutions install Calico for Windows. And if you're interested in trying out Calico Enterprise, head to Tagera IO uh, trial. Um, and uh, also, uh, I would encourage you to take a look at the uh, free resources that we have, like uh, ebook that uh, we published. And if in you're interested in Calico certification, um, check out the uh, uh, Calico cert certification link. Uh, let me take a look if anyone has any questions. Uh, currently, I do not see any questions. Uh, so if you'll I'll give another minute or so uh, in case someone's typing, typing something right now. Yeah, another run through this while I'm um, giving it another 30 seconds or so. Um, upcoming uh, for the upcoming events, if you're interested, there is uh, event. There are a few sessions next week, uh, December 15th and 17th. Uh, then the following week uh, is going to be a deep dive in Kube Proxy, and that's in uh, EU zone, so it's in Europe. Uh, then we'll have uh, a few sessions lined up for different platforms how to use Calico on OpenShift, use Calico on uh, Ranger. Uh, uh, also how to build an on-prem cluster using Calico Enterprise. With on-prem, you have uh, all the features of Calico available in there because you have uh, ability to use your uh, Calico IPAM in there. Um, and uh, uh, you, can, you can also use the BGP where you can configure some very advanced networking solutions like setting up the dual tour configuration if, if that's a requirement for, for your business. Okay, thank you for attending this session and have a good day.